يا ايها الذين امنوا اتقوا الله وقولوا قولا سديدا يصلح لكم اعمالكم ويغفر لكم ذنوبكم ومن يطع الله ورسوله فقد فاز فوزا عظيما اما بعد فان اصدق الحديث كتاب الله وخير الحديث هدي محمد صلى الله عليه وسلم وشر الأمور محدثاتها فكل محدثة بدعة وكل بدعة ضلالة وكل ضلالة في النار الحمد لله الحمد لله الذي أنزل على عبده الكتاب ولم يجعل له إوجاء الحمد لله الذي هدانا لهذا وما كنا لنهتدي لولا أن هدانا الله Alhamdulillahi Rabbil Alameen Our praise is due to Allah, the Lord of all the worlds Our praise is due to Allah who has revealed the scripture unto his servant and has made no crookedness therein Our praise is due to Allah who has guided us to this path and we would not have been able to guide ourselves had not Allah guided us Alhamdulillahi Rabbil Alameen Allah Ta'ala reminds us in the Qur'an how much we should love Him. So Allah Ta'ala mentions, وَمِنَ النَّاسِ مَنْ يَتَّخِذُ مِنْ دُونِ اللَّهِ أَنْدَادًا يُحِبُّونَهُمْ كَحُبِّ اللَّهِ وَالَّذِينَ آمَنُوا أَشَدُّ حُبَّ لِلَّهِ That amongst the people there are those who take likenesses that they love as they should love Allah yuhibbunahum kahubbillah whom they love as they should love Allah walladheena amanu ashaddu hubba lillah those who believe they are more intense in their love for Allah than those idolaters are for their idols they are more intense in their love for Allah than they are in their love for anything else. قُلْنْ كَانَ أَبَاءُكُمْ وَأَبْنَاءُكُمْ أَبَاءُكُمْ وَأَبْنَاءُكُمْ وَإِخْوَانُكُمْ وَأَزْوَاجُكُمْ وَعَشِيرَاتُكُمْ وَأَمْوَالٌ اقْتَرَفْتُمُوهَا وَتِجَارَةٌ تَخْشَوْنَ كَسَادَهَا أَوْ مَسَاكِنُ تَرْضَوْنَهَا أَحَبَّ إِلَيْكُمْ مِنَ اللَّهِ وَرَسُولِهِ وجهاد في سبيله فتربصوا حتى يأتي الله بأمره والله لا يهدي القوم الفاسقين القوم الفاسقين. Say if it be that your parents or your children, literally your fathers or your sons, your brothers or your spouses, your kinfolk, the the wealth you have earned, the business you fear decline in, the dwellings you delight in, if any of those are more beloved to you than Allah and His Messenger and striving in His cause, then wait until Allah brings about His command and Allah does not guide a morally bankrupt people. Ahabba ilaykum, ashaddu hubba lillah. Brothers and sisters, we should have an intense love for Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. And that love has a foundation. We're not talking just an abstract. Just wake up one day and love Allah. Wake up one day and realize how good Allah has been to you. <coughs> it's a natural human propensity to love those who do good, as Ibn Mas'ud mentioned. رضي الله عنه جبلت القلوب على حب من أحسن إليها جبلت القلوب hearts have been predisposed على حب من أحسن إليها to love those who do good to them any good we can reckon ultimately Allah it's from Allah any good that we receive is from Allah ultimately. There are, he's created means in this world to convey that good to us. But he is the one 
who directs those means to provide those things that we love. And this is why we say, Alhamdulillah, all praise is due to Allah. And when we understand the good that we enjoy is from Allah. وَمَا بِكُمْ مِنْ خَيْرٍ فَمِنَ اللَّهِ Any good you enjoy, and مِنْ نِعْمَةٍ فَمِنَ اللَّهِ Any blessing you enjoy is from Allah. Any good you enjoy, we enjoy, is from Allah. Beauty is a foundation of love. We see beautiful things, we fall in love with them. See beautiful flowers, we, we fall in love. I want to plant some of those in front of my house. Stop the car, let me take a picture of these flowers. They're so beautiful, I love them. Beauty is a foundation for love. Inna Allah jameel yuhibbul jamal. Allah is beautiful. Allah is ultimate beautiful. beautiful. Beauty rather. Just as His ultimate mercy. His ultimate beauty. They say that there are four Eids we have. Three in this world, Eid al-Fitr, the Eid, the festival for breaking the fast, or Eid al-Adha. And the, the Eid or the festival at the culmination of the Hajj. And Eid al-Jum'ah, to our annual one is weekly. This is Eid. And the fourth is in the Akhirah. The Eid of the Akhirah is the day of the Ru'ya, the vision. Wujuhu yawma'idun nadira ila rabbiha nadira. And the vision was, will be the greatest joy in Jannah, in paradise, when the full beauty and the full splendor of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala is beheld by the human being. But we can have a, a taste of that beauty in this world. Not with the vision of our eyes, not with our eyesight, but with our insight, with the vision of our hearts. If we cultivate our hearts and we cleanse our hearts and we purify our hearts and we orient our hearts, towards Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. And then love will consume our hearts. And that's the highest motivation for worshiping Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. That's the highest motivation. And it comes if we work towards it. So love, we should love Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. And someone hearing this who might be a Christian or from a Christian background, they'll say it's good to love God, but we have a loving God. There's only one God, our God. If you're Jewish, Christian, Muslim, Hindu, there's only one God in reality. And that God is a loving God, Al-Wadud. He's a loving God. So where is it in the Quran? How many times in the Quran? Inna Allah yuhibbu al-muttaqeen. Wallahu yuhibbu al-sabirin. Allah loves the pious. Allah loves the patient. Love is all throughout the Quran. Love is throughout the Quran. And Allah Ta'ala promises us His love. Our love for Allah Ta'ala will never be unreciprocated. Because Allah is just. In this world, sometimes we love, especially when we're young. We call it puppy love. And unfortunately for those whose hearts are afflicted with this particular malady, many times that love isn't reciprocated. You're in seventh grade, 
and the object of your puppy love, they don't want to even look at you and you're heartbroken and crestfallen, but you get over it in a week or two. But Allah never disappoints us. Allah tells us, Man ahabba liqa'allahi ahabba Allahu liqa'a. If you love the meeting with Allah, Allah loves to meet you. If you, يَا أَيُّهَا الَّذِينَ آمَنُوا مَنْ يَرْتَدَّ مِنْكُمْ عَنْ دِينِ فَسَوْفَ يَتِّ اللَّهُ بِقَوْمٍ يُحِبُّهُمْ وَيُحِبُّونَ Oh, you who believe, if you turn back from this religion, meaning from helping it and working for it, then Allah will bring another people. And how does He describe those people? Whom He will love and they will love Him. It's reciprocal. It's not a one-way street whom he will love and they will love him. Because if we love Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, that's a sign that Allah loves us. It's a reciprocal relationship. But it doesn't come, it doesn't come cheap. Right? Some of you heard Shaykh Hamza tell the story of, of the, the lady who uh, married the, the most generous of the Arabs and he had to work hard for her love. She said, no, no, you can't be with me. What, what kind of man are you? You're in your tribe. He goes out and they're going towards their home and he stops. No, no, we're not at our home. We haven't had the feast and they go there and haven't had the feast. No, no, you have to end the war. Then you've earned my love. So the love for Allah doesn't come, it doesn't come cheap. It doesn't come cheap. And, and this, these, these meanings infuse our civilization when we had a civilization. It was a civilization that was permeated with love. So singers would sing songs. They say things like, the one who wants to experience and to know the deepest meanings of our beauty, our dowry is high for the one who proposes to us. It's not cheap. And the more valuable, the more precious something is, or someone is, the higher the dowry. So we have to, we have to pay the price. We have to pay the price. What is the price? Jasadun mudna, wa ruhun fil ana, wa jufunun la tadhuqul wasana. Bodies that are worn out. Because they're fasting for the sake of their Lord. They're fasting out of the love of their Lord. And their souls are fatigued. Because of the, the, the sacrifices they make. And their eyelids don't know sleep. Because the sweetness of the words of their beloved keep their eyes open to take in more of the Qur'an and standing in the presence of their, love, their beloved in the deep reaches of the night keep them awake in prayer this, this, is, this is the reality of the, the environment that shaped us as a people. We're people of love. The Prophet Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam لا يؤمن أحدكم حتى أكون أحب إليه من والده ووالده والناس أجمعين No one of you truly believes until I am more beloved to him than his father, his parents in general his son, his children in general, and all of humanity. And all of humanity. 
and 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 again that that love brings the love of Allah it brings the love of the messenger of Allah but we have to work for it we have to work for it so if we love someone we we follow them some of our children they love these sports stars so they get the paste on or whatever you call it and put it on the wall you know and they, they adore those people they want to be like them they know everything about them they know how tall they are when they were born where they went to high school where they went to college what was their first professional team second team how much their salary was how much the signing bonus was they know everything about them and they want to be like them, they want to follow them. Well, if we love Muhammad Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam, we obey him and we follow him. <laughs> the one who loves someone, they obey them. If someone loves someone, they obey them. If someone loves someone, they imitate them. They say imitation is the greatest form of flattery. Say to them, O Muhammad. So the Prophet sallallahu alayhi wa sallam, he's, he's commissioned by Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala to give us a test for our love of Allah. Say to them, O Muhammad, in kuntum tuhibbun Allah, if it be that you love Allah, fattabi'uni then follow me. And as we said, we won't be disappointed. Allah will then love you and forgive your sins. And forgive your sins. Which reminds us of something. That love is expressed through Deeds. Love isn't just empty words. Oh, I love you, I love you, I love you. Ah, like, oh, shut up. <laughs> like a broken record. If you love me, go out and get a job. So I could quit mine and... <laughs> if you really love me. If you love me, wash the dishes sometimes. Hey, what are you doing to show her? If you love me, just come home sometimes. Say you love me as soon as the phone rings you out the door to go hang out with, with your brothers. Allah says he will love you and forgive our sins. Then him Allah. Then him Allah. So, brothers and sisters, what are we going to do? Follow the Prophet. Fattabi'uni. Follow me. Yawfir lakum dhunubakum. Afwan. Fattabi'uni yuhbibkum Allah. Allah will love you. Yawfir lakum dhunubakum. And he will forgive your sins. Wallahu ghafur rahim. And Allah is forgiving and Allah is merciful. La anha illallah. So... How do we cultivate the love for the Prophet Wasallam? By following him. By learning about him. Like the, 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 the teenagers who put the things on the wall. They learn everything about that person that they adore and they think they love. How much do we know about the Prophet Wasallam? When we learn about him and we learn about what he suffered for us it would be virtually impossible not to love him we know that he sacrificed his standing amongst his people for us al amin could have been the leader of the arabs they even offered him that he passed that up for us he could have been wealthy he could have continued in his business. And if 
if Allah had so desired. <laughs> no, he, he left all that for us. He migrated far from his home. He suffered the indignities at Ta'if. He migrated far from his home for us. He saw his beloved companions, his uncle Hamza assassinated, Mus'ab bin Umair, and others who gave up everything for his service, Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam. For us, for us brothers and sisters. And his love extends to the end, Yawm al when everyone's obsessed with themselves, nafsi, nafsi. There's a little latifa associated with that, a little subtle point for us to reflect on. If we, we could literally translate the nafsi, selfie, selfie. Everyone is obsessed with themselves. You don't just take a selfie, it's click. No, you're obsessed with yourself. Make sure you get it just right. Click. But our Prophet Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam isn't obsessed with himself. When everyone's nafsi, 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 selfie, 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 ummati, ummati, my nation, my nation, Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam. Why? Because just as everyone loves themselves, he loves us. He's not thinking about himself. Just as he wasn't thinking about himself at Ta'if. And he wasn't thinking about himself when he left his home and his people and he migrated from Mecca to Medina. And he wasn't thinking about himself at Uhud when he nearly lost his life. And he wasn't thinking about himself during those hard times during the blockade when he was forced out to the outskirts of the city with little food and little support. He wasn't thinking about himself when he sacrificed what he sacrificed. He was thinking about us. And he was motivated by his love for us. Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam. How could we not love him? And beauty, you said the, the beauty is a basis for, for love. It's the most beautiful human being. In his physical description, in his, his behavior, in his conduct, in his manners. Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam. Alhamdulillah. Love should exist between us. Mathalun mu'minin fi tawaddihim wa tarahumihim wa ta'atufihim mathalu jasad. The likeness of the believers in their mutual love and their mutual mercy and the emotional bond between them is like a single body. We have to love each other, brothers and sisters. When Allah Ta'ala, the Messenger of Allah tells us those things that cement the ties of brotherhood and sisterhood between us, what does he say? La tahasadu. Don't envy one another. Wa la tanajashu. Don't raise the prices against each other. Generally, don't conspire against each other. Wa la tabagadu. And don't hate one another. Which means what? Mafum mukhalafa. Love each other. Love each other. Love each other. The love is gone from many Muslims' heart. They just see the other Muslim as a political enemy. And what is politics? Politics is something associated with this dunya. When your brother whom you should love for the sake of Allah becomes an enemy for the sake of the dunya, that is a sign that the love has gone out of the heart. And that's a sign that the faith has become weak. Because Allah tells us to love one another and the Prophet Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam tells us to one, love one another. 
And so when we discard that from the dunya, and what is the dunya? What is the dunya? Does Allah love the dunya? Allah loves faith. Habbaba ilaykumul iman wa zayyanahum fi qulubikum. Allah has adorned and made faith beloved to you, and He's adorned it in your hearts. What is the dunya? That people become enemies over. That people take the love of their heart out of their hearts for sake. لو تعدل الدنيا عند الله جناح بعوضة ما سقى فيه كافرا شرة ما. The world doesn't even mean a mosquito's wing with Allah. لو تعدل الدنيا عند الله جناح بعوضة. And people are killing their Muslim brothers over it. They're forcing their Muslim brothers into starvation. They're raping their Muslim sisters. They're tearing homes apart. They're making orphans out of children for the dunya. Because the love that should be between us, مَثَلُ الْمُؤْمِنِينَ فِي تَوَدِّهِمْ وَتَرَحُمِهِمْ وَتَعَطُفِهِمْ مَثَلُ الْجَسَدِ It's like a single body that اشتكى منه عدوان تداعى له سائر الجسد بالسحر والحمى when one part of that body complains of an injury, the body, the parts rally each other for its sake. They call each other Your neck, the finger is cut, it might get infected. Now get some white blood cells over there quick. My, I hope I'm medically proper in saying that. Yeah, head, eyes, get, get, don't sleep. How, how can you sleep? Make some fever so we realize that the infection is coming, the fever is coming. We have to address that wound in the body. Why? Because we love each other. And as we said, there should be some action. Love could be subjective and it could be empty. But no. Mercy is objective. The willingness to sacrifice, the willingness to lose something on the sake or for the sake of one, mercy is shown too. The two are together. The man and the woman, which is the foundation of that community that should have love and mercy. What does Allah say should hold them together? And Allah says He's made between the man and the woman love and mercy. But we become heedless. We forget. We become complacent. And we don't work to keep that love alive. And what is the greatest act, the greatest action? Mercy. The mercy goes out of our heart. A man comes home, wife is exhausted. There's an emergency. She had to run the children to the hospital and then come home and do whatever she had to do. And then she had to cook. Then another emergency, then she had to take the kids to karate practice. And little Ahmed, he broke his wrist. She had to run him to the emergency room. And then she comes home and tries to get the house ready because her husband's coming home. And he comes home and the dinner's not ready and he blows up. Where's the mercy? And that happens two or three times. It could happen the other way. The guy's out there breaking his neck and he's dealing with emergencies. He's pushed from pillar to post and he goes into the office and the boss is dumping on him. And he comes home and his wife's been sitting around all day watching soap operas and he just needs a massage and a hot meal. And she says, no, I have to watch the one that comes on in the evening now. Where's the mercy? And when the mercy goes, the love follows. They go together. Mawadda wa rahma. 
إن في ذلك لآيات لقوم يتفكرون. Surely in this are signs for people who reflect. So all the way from top to bottom, all the way is love, brothers and sisters. A popular singer asked the question, "What's love got to do with it?" The answer: Everything. Everything. لا يؤمن أحدكم حتى يحب لأخيه ما يحب لنفسه. No one of you truly believes until they love for their brother, love for their sister, what they love for themselves. It's everything, brothers and sisters. And when we have a a, a loving and rich and deep relationship with Allah Subhanahu wa Taala, and a loving, deep relationship with the Messenger of Allah, and love qualifies our relationships with each other at a communal level. And love permeates throughout our homes, brothers and sisters. We'll have a society, and we'll have an, create an environment that will sustain us through all of the trials and tribulations this world can throw at us. Because we'll know we have a loving and nurturing community to soften the blows of the world. We have loving homes to come to that soften the blows of the world. And we and we we appreciate that, and because we appreciate it, we're willing to do what we have to do to keep that love alive. May Allah give us tawfiq. May Allah bless us. May Allah give us strength. May Allah forgive us. May Allah may Allah bless us with His love. Allahumma inna nasaluk nasaluk hubb. Inna nas'aluka hubbak. Inna nas'aluka hubbak. Ya Allah, we ask you for your love. Wa hubba man yuhibbuk. Wa hubba man yuhibbuk. Wa hubba man yuhibbuk. And the love of those who love you. Why? Al-maru ala dini ala dini akhihi. Ala dini khalili. Ala dini akhihi. Fal yanzur ahadukum man yukhali. المر على دين خليله فلينظر أحدكم من يخالل. A person is on the religion of his companions, of her companions. If your love, if your friends and your acquaintances love Allah, then you're going to be on their deen. And if your friends and your acquaintances are people who aren't even people, they're figments of some Hollywood producer's imagination. In human form, and they have nothing to do with Allah and His Messenger. If those are your companions, if those are the people you spend your waking hours with, you're going to be on their deen. Wa hubbu man yuhibbuk, and the love of those who love you. Wa hubbu al-amal al-ladi yubalighuna hubbak, and love of those deeds that draw us close to your love, Ya Allah, that deliver us unto your love. يا الله أقول قول هذا واستغفر الله لي ولكم ولسائر المؤمنين يقوم استغفر الله استغفر الله استغفر الله استغفر الله الحمد لله رب العالمين والصلاة والسلام على سيد المرسلين سيدنا محمد وعلى آله وصحبه وسلم تسليما كثيرا إن الله وملائكته يصعدون على النبي يا أيها الذين آمنوا صلوا عليه وسلموا تسليهما اللهم صل وسلم وبارك على سيدنا وحبيبنا وقرة أعيننا محمد وعلى آله وصحبه وسلم تسليما كثيرا يا أيها الذين آمنوا اتقوا الله وكونوا مع الصادقين اللهم اغفر للمسلمين والمسلمات والمؤمنين والمؤمنات الأحياء منهم والأموات ربنا لا تزك قلوبنا بعد إذ هديتنا وحب لنا من لدنك رحمة إنك أنت الوهاب ربنا أفرغ علينا الصبر وثبت أقدامنا وانصرنا على القوم الكافرين ربنا أفرغ علينا الصبر وثبت أقدامنا وتوثنا مسلمين وعفو عنا وغفر لنا وارحمنا أنت 
مولانا فانصرنا على القوم الكافرين اللهم عنا نعوذ بك من الحم والحزن ونعوذ بك من العجز والكسل ونعوذ بك من الجبن والضخ ونعوذ بك من غلبة الدين وقهر الرجال اللهم اقسم لنا من خشيتك ما تحول به بيننا وبين معصيك ومن طاعتك ما تبلغنا بها جنتك ومن اليقين ما يهون علينا مصائب الدنيا ومتعنا بأسماعنا وأبصارنا وقوتنا ما أحييتنا واجعله الوارث منا واجعل ثأرا على من ظلمنا وانصرنا على من عدانا ولا تجعل مصيبتنا في ديننا ولا تجعل الدنيا أكبر همنا ولا مبلغ علمنا ولا تسلط علينا بذنوبنا من لا يخافك ولا يرحمنا يا أرحم الراحمين اللهم منصر المسلمين في كل مكان في كل مكان يا الله انصر المسلمين في كل مكان وفي كل زمان أنت مولانا فانصرنا على القوم الكافرين اللهم إن نسألك حبك وحب من يحبك وحب العمل الذي يبلغنا حبك اللهم اجعل في قلوبنا نورا وفي أبصارنا نورا وفي أسماعنا نورا وعلى نساننا نورا وبين يد أيدينا نورا ومن خلفنا نورا وعن إيماننا نورا وعن شمائلنا نورا ومن فوقنا نورا ومن تحتنا نورا اللهم اجعل جميعا أنوارا يا الله أنوارا أنوار الهداية والنصرة والنصحة يا الله أنت مولانا فانصرنا للقوم الكافرين سبحان ربك رب العزة عما يصفون والسلام على المرسلين والحمد لله رب العالمين أكم الصلاة يرحمني ويرحمكم الله